So while the uh, Jaggy was getting its final touches, uh, I picked up this. Uh, so this will be the next project car for the channel. It's a 1974 P76 Leyland. Uh, it's, it's got the single headlights, it's the deluxe model, it's the base model for bench seat, column auto, really quite straight bodywork, uh, you know, straight grill, straight bumper, little thing there, but uh, we, we don't let that stop us. You know, it's fantastic wide uh, uh, wheel flares, great stripes, blackouts on the windows, die cast ventilation. It's very squared off roof line, very tall roof once you're actually sitting in this, I'm about six foot three. And this roof is very tall and, and the width of the car is very, very wide. Um, I picked this up for a really good deal and there's something really, really special about this under the hood. Um, it's not just your stand P76, um, let's just say it goes a bit quicker <laughs> or, you know, parts are easier to find or like, you know. Especially compared to the Jaguar. But let's take a look around. Hello, baby. So, what, so what's really, really cool about this car is uh, what's under the hood. It's a Rover V8. So instead of just being the conventional straight six, like every other one of my cars, this is actually a rather fantastic um, V8 engine. It's a Rover V8. Uh, it was made in a 4.4 litre, this, this particular one is 4.4 litre. Uh, these were based on the uh, P, uh, Rover uh, V8 engines, which is the P70, uh, P6, uh, and those were a, uh, they used a 3.5 litre version of this. Uh, they have an aluminium block, an aluminium head. Um, these were uh, used on the Land Rovers and Land Rover Discoveries. This particular one has you know, the original blue on the rocker covers, it's got a very nice flat, uh, flat, um, it's a very square looking engine, it's, it's, it's very, very nice. Two barrel carburetor on the top, on top of this, 3.5 litre um, intake manifold, it's got a 3.5 stamp uh, on the inlet casting, which made me think, oh god, it's a 3.5, but no, 4.4's actually had 3.5 parts all over them, including the starter motor, you can get a brand new starter motor for about 150 bucks. Water pumps are the same, dizzies are the same, inlet manifolds are the same, rockers are the same, camshafts are different, but you know, organically they're the same. Thermo you know, um, thermostat housings, they're the same. Oil filters, very cheap. <laughs> um, everything they could possibly want in an engine is on this one, which is to say, it's cheap and it's good. <laughs> so I'm, I'm actually very, very relieved because. Um, in a way because the Jaguar loved the engine, loved the dual overhead cam, loved the triple carburetors, uh, loved the layout and the design of that one, but it is very cramped and it is very, very much um, hard to get parts for and you have to adapt parts to fit. So what I like about this car in particular is that since it's a British Leyland product, no that's not a selling point, but um, the fact is they used a lot of parts between models and therefore it's things like suspension, tie rods, uh, springs, uh, leads, cables, ancillaries, coils, points, anything. Anything in this engine bay is easy to find <laughs> um, for being an old engine. You know, it's like finding parts for a Holden uh, 253 or 5 litre red V8 or, or like you know, probably not quite as common as Falcon V8s, but certainly, certainly more common than Jaguar six six cylinder parts. It's, you know, because they didn't change these for a, for a long time during their production run, like the Jaguars. So this should be really, really fun. It doesn't run. I haven't got it running yet. It didn't come with keys. Uh, that's a running thing. But the carburetor is free. I can see there's there's schmuck in there already. So this carburetor has to come off get a good clean out. The starter motor in this I was told doesn't work but the guy didn't have keys either so I'm not sure how he could figure that out unless he bumped the starter motor with a screwdriver. Um, in that case yeah it would be screwed <laughs> if you kept doing that. So that's why I brought up starter motor prices because mine screwed up. But yeah, uh, Really really happy to work on something really really cool. 4.4 uh, litre uh, odd displacement Rover V8 engine. Super lightweight very fuel economic. Again, I'm not chasing power here. I just like 
this for being a very economic engine both in parts and with fuel consumption so very much looking forward to this the door handle doesn't work that's that's another recurring theme I buy British cars the doors don't work this is British Leyland so you know I got that to blame however my Jaguar was also British Leyland era so take that as you will <laughs> um, this um, this car um, very spun very spun I'm like the Jaguar which was like insane luxury you know plush leather leather seating center console beautiful dash cluster big gauges full instrumentation beautiful beautifully designed this isn't quite that <laughs> um, you got a nice boomerang steering wheel which is very uh, holding Kingswood uh, you got this great bench seat which surprise surprise is really not that bad condition like it's Surprisingly, um, I don't feel gross sitting in here, which I couldn't say about the Jaguar when I got that. But um, yeah, the steering wheel's a bit cracked. I'll have to put a steering wheel cover on that. I didn't get a key. So a problem that I'm gonna have is getting this key out because I have to drop this column, but there's like a, a surround that goes around here. So I've been trying to figure out how to drop this out so I can drop the column so I can access the key, so I can take the key barrel off take it to my locksmith and just like with a Jaguar get a get a key cut they'll sit down with it eh, 30 bucks and, the, and I've got a key for this the guy said he'll mail me a key uh, once once he gets it off the guy he bought it off of but with those sorts of things you don't hold your breath so I'm just gonna take this out anyway the seats very comfy I do like this I, I, I honestly do not mind this Heaps of headroom. Again, I'm six foot three, and I've got like that much of leg, that much of headroom. Amazing stuff. I can splay out, and drive along. It's great. This is honestly a really a surprisingly comfortable seat. I read about these seats in the like a Wheels magazine or mo Modern Motor Test. You know when they compare the HQ, the VJ Ranger, the XA Falcon, and the brand new P76 six cylinder, right? And it had the same bench seat. And I, and I can testify that this is honestly, I think the best Australian bench seat I've ever, I've ever sat in. You know, um, I've had Valiants, they were pretty comfortable. Um, Kingswoods, not really. Falcons, you know, they did the job. This, this is fantastic. Stuff that you get with this car, um, you get a uh, fuel meter, uh, speedo, uh, temperature gauge, right in the center of your vision so that tells you what's the most important about these cars it's, it's temperature um, that could have either been a, a tachometer or a 12 hour clock um, I'm pretty sure being the deluxe this would have been just a 12 hour clock uh, regardless uh, it's fallen out I'm not sure where it's gone I don't know if, I don't know if the face is like fallen back behind the dash or something but it's just missing so maybe I can like put a tach tachometer aftermarket tach tachometer there or something you know maybe tr I'll try to make it not tacky looking you know it's not it's not a sports or rally car it's it's you know it's a base model V8 <laughs> and that's a voltmeter right there you know indicators here fresh air ventilation here and on the floor uh, heater controls and that's it the radio is hacked apart so I'm gonna be putting a modern head unit in there um, probably won't be going old school because um, yeah, I don't have the holes that you'd mount an old school radio into. That will be a single DIN radio. So I'll try to find something, again, not offensive. Um, so, something preferably without a billion zillion colours that you find for 40 bucks usually. So, yeah, but that's down the road. Uh, we've got more pressing things to do. You've got really nice Coke bottle lines here, but I think it's interrupted a little bit by how square the roof is. Like you've got these nice flares that you see on like Kingswoods, I think like HKTG. Uh, Kingswood had nice kickouts like this. Um, the swooping body uh, character line here, fantastic stuff. And then, you know, you've even got the uh, window that, that kicks up along the door here. But then you've got like this really boxy roof. Um, I, think, I think that's why there's a bit of a clash in what it wanted to be and what it wanted to do. So this, yeah, you know, you, you love it or you hate it, and I flip-flop between the two. I, I can't tell if this is a really pretty car or if it's like a really 
as they say, one of the ugliest ever made. You got these fantastically big um, tail lights, um, bigger than my hand, um, incidentally. All these creases on the boot lid. Um, really, really cool stuff. Hand drawn plates on this one. Um, air brake suspension. So the guy before me, I think, was towing a caravan. Uh, to open the boot, there's the lock. And the boot opens up. And this one is a bit of WD 40. There we go. So, it's a big trunk. I'll give it that. It, it, is, it, is, a, it is a very big trunk. But it's not like. I think the Jaguar one is bigger. It's longer, definitely longer. This one is more. It's something. It's bigger than a Kingswood. Definitely bigger than a Kingswood. I'd say maybe even bigger than a than a Valiant. Those are two cars I've experienced with. They say it's a big boot. It is a big boot. Not the biggest I've ever seen. So I was a little bit underwhelmed. Sorry um, about this. Um, but still a decently sized trunk, all the same. There's definitely some rust in the engine bay, like um, uh, in the wheel wheel um, wheel wells uh, on this side, and along the front cowl, and some along the firewall here. But nothing substantial. It's only really surface rust. But there is substantial rust on this car, so we'll get into that. So rust including uh, the boot uh, wheel uh, bottoms and the associated quarters not too hard there's a bit of substantial rust behind the stainless trim there uh, at the back of the sill the sill itself doesn't look so bad I think that's all surface rust the doors have broken through they're going to need treatment but they're just flat pieces of metal so it's really really inconsequential to fix those you can't see it but uh, both front floors have some rot not as much as the Jaguar nowhere near as much as the Jaguar but it is there, uh, a little soft uh, in the centre, and that's it. Uh, so that'll take me probably a weekend to do uh, once all this uh, vinyl floor is out. I think the only substantial rot in the car is this chassis rail here, which is blown out on three sides uh, where the sway bar uh, mounts to. Uh, it's just box section metal, so it's not going to be too bad. And it's not like it's before the suspension joints, it's actually after the suspension joints. So when you jack this car up, it's really really inconsequential it's not going to like fold because <laughs> there's not much hanging forward of that anyway just like with the uh, Kingswoods they rot out around that point but it's not exactly terrible but regardless we'll fix it and uh, yeah I think structurally that's it so otherwise the car's actually in really decent shape uh, it's only surface rust some blemished seats um, a key for the dashboard get the engine running that's it. So of course we're going to fix the Jaguar before we get onto this. This is just, the deal was too good to pass up. Uh, so uh, we will be fixing the Jaguar, paint, body, uh, at paint, interior, engine, and then we're moving on to this. So don't expect to see this one for a few months. Um, however, I am very excited to work on this. As far as what it needs, it needs slight rust repair, quick coat of paint, reapply this blackouts, Retrim the interior, so we're going to use vinyl for that one. Super simple compared to leather. I don't have to grab another machine <laughs> just to sew the leather. Uh, I'll be able to use a, a clothes, you know, make shirts sort of machine to sew the vinyl inside here. Uh, you know, fix the cracks in the dashboard, send it all back, give it a one stage normal coat like before. And then for the engine, all that needs is a starter motor, a rotor button clean out of the carby, possibly a fuel pump, we'll have to find that one out, possibly one or two things, but I have no reason to think that this engine won't run, you know, really, really quickly, but, you know, if I had some cash right now, go down to the auto parts store, grab some things, fire it up, you know, but until then, uh, thank you very much for watching, please uh, continue uh, watching the Jag series, uh, don't be greedy. Don't don't wait for this. <laughs> this will be in a few months. Keep watching the Jag series. I want you to watch the Jag series. You're going to enjoy it, guaranteed. Thank you very much for watching.